Hey guys, you guys asked for it, here it is. Today, we're gonna show you how to do polar alignment using PhD2 Drift Align. My name's John Robinson, the AstroTard. This is Deep Sky. Okay guys, we have one hour of clear skies tonight. So the only thing that I can do that's productive, I think, is to answer uh, a viewer viewer's request. I have multiple requests actually to go into more detail about how I use PhD to uh, to align to the polar equator. As you know, if you've seen my other videos, you know I cannot see Polaris from my house uh, because my house blocks the north. And so I use PhD2 Drift Align uh, to achieve polar alignment. And uh, I made a video on that, and but maybe I wasn't uh, showing you all of the steps to adjusting the RA and deck. So this time I'm gonna show you step by step everything that I do to polar align using PhD2 Drift Align. So let's get into it. I'm gonna assume that you already have set up your mount and you're ready to go. You know, you've got your marks in place, so that you're already roughly polar aligned. You've got your vibration pads down, you put your tripod up, you added the mount, you installed the extender bar, you had a bubble level, you added the weights, you added the scope, you wired it up, and you're ready to go. Obviously, you've turned on the power, you've set your date and time, you've done a three-star align. At this time of year, I am usually using uh, Sirius, Murfac, and Procyon. And now we're ready to jump right into the drift align. So to begin, we're gonna start with Stellarium. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is actually connect Stellarium to your mount. So you go into the telescope section of Stellarium, make sure it's connected, and then now you can control the mount from Stellarium. What we're looking for is where the east and west line crosses the north and south. We're going to find a star, and that's a position 90 degrees orthogonal from Polaris. So we're finding the star in that position. I press control A and you can see now the mount is moving the telescope to that position where the east and west meets north and south. Now I'll speed up time. It's just passing through Polaris right now, getting down there to that uh, orthogonal position. Make it go a little bit faster so that you can see that. And uh, yeah, so here's what it looks like outside when it's pointed, pointed 90 degrees orthogonal. And uh, now we're in the right position to begin the drift align. So we're going to have to stop the connection to the telescope because only one connection is allowed on the driver to the telescope. We'll go into PHD2 and we'll press the little USB button. We'll press the connect button. Now the PHD2 is connected to the scope. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure that the camera is working, pressing refresh. And I'm going to do an auto star select here, make sure that it can select the star. And it can. So now we're going to go ahead and do our drift align here. So we're going to go up to tools, drift align. And we're actually now beginning our drift align in that position, 90 degrees orthogonal. Now, scope on the left, left is down. We're going to press drift. What we're watching here is the graph in the bottom section there. We're looking at the RA and deck lines. In this case, we're focused on declination. What we're looking at and, and watching the graph to achieve what we want to see is the red and the blue lines aligning on the horizontal plane. And you can see that it's way off. So I need to go outside and do some adjustment on the declination. So let's go outside now and make that adjustment. So the way to think about this is scope on the left, left adjustment is down. Scope on the right, right adjustment is down. In this case, my scope is on the right. So the right side is down. So I'm going to screw this one in and pull this one out. We'll loosen this side and we'll tighten this side. And it's way off so I'm going to do a full turn. But anyway, this is what it means scope on the right and right is down. Okay, now that we've made that adjustment, we'll come back into PHD2 inside the house, press drift, and uh, I'll speed up time here so we can watch this thing 
achieve uh, its uh, focus. You can see that now we've gone too far. It's too low, so I need to go up. Let's go up on the right. So uh, right, uh, left is up in this case. So we're gonna adjust left, up. Okay, obviously we went too far, so we're gonna take it back a little bit. We'll loosen this side of the declination. And we'll tighten this side of the declination, and I'm gonna watch this mark move to the left. And I'll go halfway. And I'll tighten that side as I do. Okay, I'm back inside to PHD2, pressing drift again, speeding up time, and we're watching that red line, see if we can get closer to the horizon. And it looks like it's getting better. Um, you can see that uh, it's, it's not exactly there, but we are making a difference. This time, scope is on the right, right is down, we wanna go up, so we're gonna adjust our left declination inwards. Loosen the right side, adjust the left, and we're watching this mark right there. It's getting back towards the center position. Tighten that side. Let's go back in and check. Okay, fourth time's a charm. This should do it. So we'll go ahead and press drift again, speed up time, and you can see the result here in the graph. It looks like in this case we've, we've found the magic position for the declination. So the red and the blue lines are achieving um, unison along the horizon. So what we're going to do now, we've disconnected PHD2, we're going to reconnect to Stellarium. Now we're working on right ascension. For right ascension you need to move the telescope to where the east-west line is near the horizon. I'm going to choose the western horizon. I'm going to choose a star on the western horizon. And I'm going to tell the telescope using Stellarium to go along the east-west line to that horizon. I press Control A. I zoom out here. You can sort of see the telescope move in that position. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll speed up time so that uh, you don't have to watch this thing move. But Basically, we're moving the telescope. When you see that little round thing moving, that's actually the telescope moving outside. Okay, slowing it back down again. You can see we're getting it on the western horizon. And maybe we'll just kind of go outside and show you what that looks like. So now you can see the telescope is uh, pointing in the, near the western horizon, just above the fence line over there. And now we're going to adjust the right ascension. Okay, so we're going to turn off our connection to the telescope in Stellarium because we have to reconnect it to PHD2. So I press stop here and I go back to PHD2, press connect. So now PHD2 is connected. Bring up tools, drift align, and we'll go to the uh, altitude section here. And again, this is an indication go to the horizon, which we did. We're going to press drift on this and watch it go. It will do an auto star select. Now, notice how it's kind of grainy, and I've sped up time here, but uh, we're a little bit, it looks like a little bit maybe high in the right ascension. In this case, right ascension is red, not declination. So we're gonna go outside, we'll make an adjustment, and uh, see if we can bring that back down. Up is down. Loosening this guy, lifting this guy up, Good. Okay, so after adjusting the right ascension, I went up a little bit. Going up will make the hopefully make the line go down. Pressing drift, speeding up time now, and uh, don't worry about the fact that we're losing the star. It finds the star again, and uh, it looks like this time we are going to zoom in and find our right ascension unison on the horizontal line here. So yeah, that looks um, that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to go ahead and call that good. So I'm going to say drift align is complete. Here's the proof. All right, so here's the jellyfish nebula. I captured 10 minutes on this. Let's zoom in here. You can see my stars are mostly round, which is indicating that the guiding is pretty good. Let's actually check the guiding. This is uh, after doing that drift align. So what does the guiding look like? So you can see we're at about a 0.9 total error, which isn't the best, but it's good enough. Uh, so I guess you can say drift align was successful. Okay guys, hopefully that made sense. So let's just recap how, how to do this. 
So after you've got your mount in place and you're all level and you've done your star alignment, then you're going to go ahead and uh, you're going to use Stellarium to point yourself in a position in the sky which is 90 degrees orthogonal from the North Star, Polaris. Then you're going to use PHD2 drift line and adjust the declination till you get the blue and the red lines to meet on the horizontal plane. Then you're going to move the telescope to a position along the east-west line. I chose the western horizon. You could also choose the east, I suppose. And uh, find a star in that location. Press drift line again. And now you're, adjust you're watching the red and the blue lines and adjusting the right ascension levers to get that in place. So what you're essentially doing is simulating what you would do if you were using your polar scope, adjusting the RA and deck and using the drift align graph to guide you to get you to that perfect alignment. And if you found this video helpful, then I encourage you to hit subscribe. And remember, there's, a, there's another video I did on this, and I'll put a link to it down in the comments. And uh, you guys can watch that if you want to. Anyway, I've rambled long enough. Clear skies. We'll see you next week.